everything the light touches is our kingdom type situation, okay? Just don't go beyond the walls, dog. Then Chubby Cheek Chuck comes along, helps the bitch boy to his hammer. The ivy doesn't go all the way to the top. What in the pixie fart shit does that even mean? Is he talking about the wall grass or vines or whatever? If so, he's lying, cause check this out, right here, freeze frame, enlarge and enhance, boom. That's ivy right there, top to bottom, he's a fucking liar. It's Founder, and holy shit, we get it, movie. He's the bad guy. Stop shoving the dick of movie exposition that far down our asses. There's DNA to go savage, and Nick gets offended by that. And when she's done, he'd be like, Fuck you, Judy Boo, you can clap your own ass cheeks, bitch. And he leaves. Tino snooping around in very top secret places of the facility when Godzilla fucks up a wall next to him and allows him to see something he was not supposed to see. And he doesn't take pictures of it because he's a fucking shithead mongoose retard. You gotta listen to Bernie, he says that attacks were not unprovoked. Could you stop listening to that black retard? You're so racist, Dad. Oh my god, no I'm not. I'm just stating facts. He's black and he is a retard. These two things are unrelated. You're the one that's making a connection between them, so technically you're the racist one, you dumb slut. That guy's daughter flies over with the anti-gravity spaceship and she got nice tits, but she a bitch. Gets up with the tickets and gives them back and vows to become a police officer because he's a stubborn dumb bitch. Zootopia has 12 unique ecosystems and you have to train for all of them but we're only going to show you training on the hot one, the cold one, and the rainy one because we can't be fucked to show the audience more. 12 ecosystems, my ass. We see only 3 ecosystems. Where are the other 9, you cunt? Boys, we got pussy. She freaked out and climbed their shitty little watchtower, which is fair enough because if this were realistic, let's be honest here, you got a bunch of teenagers, probably horny as fuck. She'd be dead via dicking within the week. And I'm a fire in the laser! So Kong jumps off, and why can't I see his King Kong dong right here? Your creators with money. You got all different types of creators on this. You got YouTubers, musicians, artists, podcast people. Do they got cam girls on this shit? Where he goes in and finds his petite French girlfriend, and they do it. They shower, they sleep, they wake up. Hmm. No way, no. In this scenario, she slides off the slippery seated chair and the chair doesn't move a fucking inch off the ground. Ever heard of physics or friction, you Garfunkel twat? He's like, I'm about to whip a nana on your ass. Watch this. Ooh, see that? See that? Ooh, necessary permits, bitch. Suck my ass. Shit, no. Yes. Okay, what place do we rob? I don't know. Well, how about this place? This place? Yes, this place. Alright, this is a robbery nobody fucking moves. I'll fucking show you you Through to quote unquote powder her nose, but we all know what that means. Okay. Next up, they decide to break into the ruins of Apex and... I highly doubt that this should be able to open the door, but whatever, maybe the doors in Apex are artistic like that. Like, well, ever since you came up here, shit's been hitting the fan mad like clockwork, bro. So yeah, that's why I hate you. Fuck you. Suck a dick, eat, die, penis. <laughs> Hong, the retard ape now bearing a fucking crane instead of his axe, throws it at Zilla and jumps onto his spiky back. Stupid moves, Kong. Stupid moves, home. And the thing about Bob starts beeping and showing them the way and leads them to this corridor. And at the end of the corridor, the thingy goes nuts and turns green and the wall opens up and then a glory hole opens. Well, this is our home. Nah, it ain't you fucking stupid ass burnt eyebrows pussy goddamn. I'll find him for you, then Bogo's like, oh, you will do no such thing, but it says that Mayor Bellwether comes in like, yes, she will, and he's like, oh, fuck my ass. <laughs> Finds him sucking on some dick, I mean, a pops. <laughs> he wipes down the gun with some tissue paper to remove it of all his prints, but he does a very shitty job of it. Bitch, you held that fucking silencer like you're about to jack it off. <laughs> with my investigation, bitch. And Nick's balls stay at the end of a very short leash, and I'm 99% sure that there exists rule 34 porn of what I just said. They run through the maze to section 7 and there's no way that Chucky the Beast 12 year old is keeping up with these guys. Just check out this clip right here, he's falling back hard. Jeez, slow it down, you're gonna give him a heart attack. <laughs> Thomas sees a shiny red button, presses it, and this hoe comes up on screen saying she's part of the World Catastrophe Kill Zone Department. To the fuck does that even mean? You have a World Catastrophe and you have a Kill Zone Department? For <laughs> Guy opens the room and pulls out a fucking sex slave out of a box. I don't even know what the fuck's going on anymore. Anyway, he ties up the sex slave and Zed pulls in Marcellus to probably do some fucking butt sex with him. The other guy likes to watch it. Of course they are. Look at the hat she's wearing. You think she can get a stiffy with that on, dumbass hoe? Yes, <laughs> this is the key to Pasadena that Mr. Lebowski likes to lube and shove up his ass every once in a while. <laughs> yes. Now, before we move forward, I'm gonna explain some shit about dreaming and Leonardo DiCaprio. But first, dreaming, this movie's all about it, okay? Multiplayer dreaming. One dude has a dream and they all jump in there and do whatever. And there are many rules to multiplayer dreaming and dreaming in general. But all you really gotta know is two things, okay? How you wake up. There's only two ways. Either a kick, which is that falling sensation you get when you're stepping off a, an unexpectedly high curb or when you, like, uh, fall, I guess. <laughs> <It's a previous laughs> 
Second way is you die. You die in a dream, you also wake up like... Later on, Donatello's doing some reality check with this spinning thing that he called a totem, you see. He spins the thing, and if it doesn't stop spinning, that means he's in a dream, he shoots himself. And if it stops spinning, he won't shoot himself, and he's in reality. Everyone who does this dreaming stuff has to have their own reality check totem thing, okay? So you don't specifically have to have the spinning top, which might I say is a horrible totem to choose because think about it. What if one time he gives this extra spin, okay? Mad rotation, I'm talking, he Beyblades that shit so hard, it's about to tear a hole through the fabric of time, and he's not in a dream. It might take a really long time for it to stop spinning, at which point he will think he's in a dream and he'll fucking kill himself and then you know what happens then bro huh what happens then asshole shit totem ha we got the info but you left some shit out didn't you what is it i know i was dreaming dumbass that's why i let you get anything in the first place i was testing you testing us for what don't matter now because you failed bitch suck my tiny asian cock hi i'm blue double d double da hi i'm sonic i bet you're wondering how i got here will smith Here's a flower I got you, woman. And she'd be like, you were running super fast again? I told you not to do that. People trying to kill us, you dipshit. We supposed to be laying low. The owl protects Sonic, then flies away with him and gets shot. And she'd be like, God fucking damn it. I should've just eaten you when I found you, stupid fucking rodent. Mm, nah, I really like it this way. He's like, what the fuck? You dare oppose me, the great and powerful Tony Star? Alfred introduces him to Ariadne Microtits, and he tells her that he has an illegal job for her. And she's like, sick, I love crime. And he gives her a test, tells her to design an amazing two minutes that takes him one minute to solve. She keeps failing at it, but then she gives him a good one. He'd be like, That's what I like. No, it isn't, and here's why. First of all, the first two minutes she made were too easy. Seriously, I saw them in less than two seconds, and I'm an idiot. Second of all, he peaked. Leonardo Picrio. No peaking. Third of all, why did you draw on the hard cover of the notebook? How's he gonna dramatically rip out pages now, dumb hoe? And fourth of all, this maze is either way too easy to solve or impossible, because you got two options. Option A, the start is here, and the end is here underneath his hand, or vice versa. In which case, the solution will be to just go all the way around, except if it's blocked here, then there is no solution. Or option B, where you start from the middle and the exit is here, in which case there is no solution, because it's all fucking blocked. So that's more like it, my ass. You're both retards and a baboon's fecal matter is probably smarter than both of you combined. The fuck was that? Alright, that's it. I'm head out. And Leo will be like, don't worry, she'll be back. Because this shit's too good to pass up on. It's like Minecraft on steroids. A fucking architect's wet dream, baby. Move on to Tom, showing raccoons and getting accepted to the SFPD, which as we know stands for Smelly Farts Are Potent and Deadly. That abbreviation actually makes sense for once. By the way, so it was either between this or Sad Faggots Pound Dicks. Yeah. So he goes to Donald Lord's, aka Tom's house shack, garden shack shed, garden shed, that's, that's the one. Hey, damn it! You gotta help me out, my legs are pisgetty and I'm not wearing any pants. You don't need pants, you don't have no penis, but fine, I'll help you. I'm jumping over a three meter tall fence out of school. You're telling me that school ends and he's the only one out of there. I call massive bullshit because the entire school should be flooding out of there right now. Now on to the plan, who they're gonna accept, why they're gonna accept him, and all that crap. Focus up. Saito's main competitor in the field of waifu pillows, or whatever business he's in, is an old geezer who's on his deathbed and is gonna leave his empire to his son, Robert, and Saito wants to put the idea into Bob's head to fucking nuke his dad's company. Now, his relationship with his dad is pissy to say the least, but it is very good at with Mr. Dingo, which is his dad's white hat man. And the plan is to go three dream levels deep where time slows down the deeper they go, and on the first level, Tom is going to personate Mr. Dingo and tell Bob some shit that will hopefully lead Bob to make his own projection of Mr. Dingo on level 2 that will tell him some other shit and on level 3 um he will have a wet dream of Mr. Dingo I don't know dog okay you think I know what I'm doing here I'm a fucking dumbass why are you even watching this shit Arya makes her own custom totem which is a chess piece instead of just stealing it from any chess set like any normal human being fucking dumb bitch Later on, she breaks into one of his secret dream sessions and finds out that he has kept memories of Maul in his dreams and he keeps revisiting them. So his issues run deep, man. I'm talking deep, okay? Fucking homie gotta watch Frozen. He gotta let go, man. I'm fucking she, bro. Welcome to I, comma, Wobot. Bubbles, water, laws, weeding. Naked Will Smith. Sheik was convinced that they were still in the dream and that they needed to wake up by killing themselves and he was like, what the fuck bitch, you crazy? Nah, I ain't doing that. So she killed herself and made it look like he killed her. I don't know why she went through all that trouble and didn't just shoot him in the head and killed herself afterwards. I guess love or whatever. Women, bruh. Women, am I right? <laughs> Before he gets to the vault, Maul shows up, and Leo hesitates on shooting Maul even though he knows she ain't real, and she shoots Bob, he gets stuck in limbo, then Leo shoots Maul, fucking great job, you cum stain. Ah, dumb cunt, you can never be like me, cause I'm amazing, and you're a bitch, you fucking pussy, why don't you just fucking delete my company, huh? Why don't you, fucking pussy, no balls, no balls, but um, whatever, maybe I'm the one with daddy issues. Sonic gets to work writing down a bucket list, and he's like, oh my god, there's so much I wanna do, but I'm leaving Earth and I can't do it. She blue ways, that's kinda sad. Let's do some of that shit in this bar, man. So, the bald fat ass comes over like, we don't like your kind around here. What do you mean? We're neither black nor gay. Worse, you're hipsters. I just realized that joke doesn't work because this guy's black, but whatever, it sounded like it was a good joke anyway. 
Through the power of depression, he turns into a sonic, super sonic ball thing and fucking crashes into the tank, destroying it. And he's like, fuck yeah, and does the flossy fucking flosses. Goddamn. Roxanne. Never gonna love me, but it's alright. Runs after the robot, jumps down some stairs and catches it and it drops a purse. Then we see this lady take her asthma inhaler out of it and takes a hit and he'd be like, This your purse? Of course this is my purse, asshole. I left my inhaler at home. He went to go get it for me. Wait, then why didn't you send him to only get back the inhaler? Be specific. Did you forget the whole purse at home or just the inhaler? Because that's the difference between being called a dumb fat old hoe and just a fat old hoe. Boons gets a call like, Yo, you know what they call when a gay dude dies? A homicide. <laughs> why are you not laughing? Will goes up to Lawrence Stroll, the boss of United States retards, and he doesn't like him because the robots and stuff like, screw you and your robots, motherfucker. Fuck you, dude. Our robots are better slaves than you ever were. Did you? I know he didn't. Did you just try and give slavery a fucking Yelp review, you goddamn imbecile? And you el poco loco. A robot could never do this because it interferes with the three laws. Oh, you're right. I gotta fucking explain the three laws. God damn it. Okay. All right. Pay attention, cunts. Law one. Don't hurt human. Law two. Always listen to human. Except if you're gonna hurt human. Law three. Always protect yourself unless you're fucking with law one or two. Then it's okay to kill yourself. Back to story. And then as five pops up and Will's cop training must have been awful cause his grip on that gun is looser than my grasp on reality. System law hates him like, nah, hell nah, okay, hell nah, you are a fugitive, get out of here. And yoga lady comes over like, Shaniqua, this my man we talking about, let him in, girl, calm your titty. So there's supposed to be a thousand robots there, but actually there's a thousand and one. So there's an imposter among them. Oh my gosh, lads, it's an Among Us reference. Wow. Fuck you. Spoon gets 5 minutes of interrogation time with the bot and bot's like, what's that thing you did with your eye? Oh that, it's cause me and my boss are gay lovers. Delusional, robots are good. No they're not, you stupid cum snorter. Get out of my house, you fresh prince of bullshit. I was leaving anyway, thought. The one armless NS5 that has survived tries to throw his car at him. Why lengthways and not sideways to make it hard for him to avoid the car? Why are futuristic robots so fucking retarded, bro? He's gone. Yeah. No good. You need a special key to get to the roof. What? You can run up buildings. Where's the problem here? What the fu- This is so dumb. Oh, whatever. Right, what are we looking for? Oh, I don't know, Tom. It's just a sack of coins and the only other thing on this godforsaken roof. God damn it, Tom. Get your head in the game, you fucking retard. No, seriously. This line makes me super mad for some reason. Like, what the fu- What do you mean? What are we looking for? This, this roof is tiny. He specifically said a sack of coins. And you've been traveling hundreds of miles to get- This is the objective here. Fucking Tom. God damn it. Cops are here and so's Muffin Head and he thinks that Spoon's going crazy like Give me your badge, fucking take it bitch, I don't care I don't fucking- Do I look like I care? Do I look like I care? Spoon and Calvin Klein go to his garage, open it up and take his sporty bike out and go for a ride Two things on this by the way One, he's a cop and his garage code is 911 Are you fucking mental bruv? That's stupid unsecure I'm sorry, I'm allergic to bullshit Get fucked idiot he spins the totem and the camera cuts right before we see if it falls or not. Mind fucking us into questioning whether the cop is dreaming or not. Told you it was a gay ass stupid totem. Fucking shit totem. Running away he calls Calvin who's in the shower so it goes to the loudspeaker voicemail thingy like Calvin you won't believe what's happening. We are so fucked. And she sees this robot fishiness and the robot goes wrong number ma'am. And she goes holy shit that is not good at all. Women's are retarded, waging wars and doing stupid shit, killing the earth, blah blah blah, and they can't be charged with their own safety so her understanding of the three laws has evolved. Saying that to protect humanity some of you bitches gotta die and Understand now, your logic is undeniable. Switches sides and holds a gun to Calvin's head, but then gives a quick wink to Spoon and he'd be like, <gasps> He gay too? Pride month! So Egg Dude takes aim and Sonic goes monkey. <laughs> monkey stance. Shots fired, Sonic goes supersonic pinball machine on Eggman and takes a big fat shit on him. <laughs> Fuck you, this works, Will Smith. Fuck you to the nth degree, Buster. And she keeps repeating, My logic is undeniable. My logic is undeniable. Shut the fuck no, up, you no, stupid no, piece of shit, no, trash no, can. But Turns out Sonny did kill Landing and the promise he made him was to do it and not tell anyone about it, saying He made me swear before he tell me what it is he wanted me to do. That's a rookie mistake, Sonny boy. You're a fucking idiot. Welcome to the Invisible Man. Boy, oh boy, what do you think this one's gonna be about? Uh, Adrian left her a cool 5 milli in his real hails. Yeah, brother, she goes back to Gems, buys him a nice spanking brand new shiny ass ladder, and offers to pay for his daughter's school, university, college, whatever. They're all three of these are named school in America for some fucking reason. Welcome to the Big Lebowski. The movie is set in Los Angeles and we start with a Texan feller giving some narration about a dude called Jeff Lebowski who likes to go by dude who's a very bro dude chill type of person smokes a lot of weed and pays for sub one dollar groceries with checks. 69, nice. <laughs> Oh yes, <laughs> this is the key to Pasadena that Mr. Lebowski likes to lube and shove up his ass every once in a while. <laughs> yes. Rich Lebowski comes in and he is potato bound to a chair and he's also fat as fuck. We've seen an invisible man breathing behind her. Uh, at this point, I'm pretty sure everybody gets it. Adrian ain't dead, he's invisible, he's fucking with her, but other than the suit making some random noises here and there of crickets having sex or whatever. 
Then the covers get taken off and a bunch of flashes happen. She gets freaked out by a mannequin Sydney has in her room. When I get freaked out by my chair in the middle of the night, and she has a fucking whole ass mannequin in her room. Damn, the balls, man. So Kiki gets up to get the covers and sees an ass imprint in the chair and does the big brave move of throwing the blanket over the chair to check if someone's there, but no one is there, so I'm checked, all done, you can check that off the list. Then he proceeds to throw some shade at the dude and the dude throws some shades on. Mm. See that wordplay? I should continue and stop sucking my own dick. Sex offender Jesus. He's a person in this movie that ultimately doesn't matter, but I really wanted to mention. But then they get a call from the bad guy telling them to throw the money off the bridge. So dumbass's plan here is moot. Okay, it doesn't matter. So he's thinking on his feet and throws his dirty underwear out instead of the money. Okay. And then he jumps out the car. His hidden Uzi goes off. Dude crashes into a pole. And the bad guys take his underwear and run away. Why the hell did you jump out of the fucking car, you goddamn fat retard? What if they looked inside and found no money and saw you jump out the car, huh? How the fuck is that a smart move? He would be driving away and you would be stuck right there dead, huh? What if they had a sniper posted up? What if... No, th this is just stupid on so many levels. She go bend now, but someone steps on the cover and for some reason she forgets her big brain move she just did a second ago and does not throw the cover over him to reveal his invisible ass and fucking spear him into the wall. No, no, no. Instead, she freaks out and calls him jams. He'd be like, what the fuck's going on, you dumb slut? The thing there, uh, I can't talk because I'm flustered. Uh, shut the fuck and go to sleep. And then gets up and faints. She go to hospital, okay? They make blood test, okay? She go home, okay? She take shower, okay? She get called from hospital saying that she got the azapine poisoning from the penis in the asshole. I don't <laughs> She goes home, she checks her email and sees that someone sent some to her sister from her account. It is Adrian, that motherfucker. So she curls up into the fetal position and cries herself to, uh, I don't know. I don't know. She doesn't cry to sleep. Where the fuck are we going with this? Uh, moving on. Kidney walks in, tries to cheer her up and says, let's eat some cake. So she uh, agrees and they try to get up. Then Kidney gets smacked across the room because Adrian hit her. And Kidney thinks Cecilia did it. So she's like, dad, come in, Cecilia fucking hit me, that cunt. Goes over to her place to find her doing naked flying art and she comes down and gives him a paper to wash off all the paint that's on his face and how the hell are the only couple of drops of paint on his face? She was flailing those brushes around like she was helicoptering a dick. What the fuck? He should be covered in paint. Alright Adrian, where you at? Square up, motherfucker. Come on, face me. Mano y mano, motherfucker. Come on, bitch. Let's throw hands, motherfucker. He gets a surprise message on his phone, then turns around and throws a can of paint at the attic hole, revealing him, then follows a trail of paint, and somehow, in the span of 15 seconds, that's right, I timed this shit, he got all the paint off by washing himself in the kitchen sink. Fucking impossible shit, bro. I started getting one centimeter of paint off myself. Gotta deep scrub that shit. Fucking power wash that crap off of myself. This some bullshit, man. So he goes home and takes a bath, then these goth Nazis come in, throw a fair at his pee pee, and go like, Where is the money, Lebowski? We believe in nothing, Lebowski. We are going to cut off your schnitzel tomorrow, Lebowski. <laughs> what the fuck? I know what to do, you fucking bitch. I just bought this car last week. Why you fuck? I fuck your car now. I fuck your car. Also tries to secure his door shut, but dipshit doesn't know how the door of his own house works, and the piss bandits just waltz in. Then we cut to some flying titties. Woo! Another guard comes, then right here, he takes his sweet ass time to taunt him and goes bang sarcastically, then walks away and shoots him in the back, and this goes on for like a good chunk of time, okay? Meanwhile, what do you think Kiki's doing? Yo! Pranked, baby! <laughs> she's sitting on all fours as if she's on the set of a porno about to do her first anal scene, with a gun literally within reaching distance of her hand, and she only goes for it once he drops the gun and she no longer has a clear shot on him. This bitch's idiocy is fucking boundless, my guy, holy sh**. Kidney watches and screams as her dad gets fucking beat half to death. You tell me you're not even gonna fucking attempt to save your dad here? Oh, I'm sure he'll stop now since you said it so nicely. What the fuck is wrong with women in this movie? God damn it, whatever. You know, some people be dickheads being all like, oh, all black people look the same, all Asians look the same, being all racist and shit. I say no. Basic white bitches, however, indistinguishable from one another. Unimportant catches her leaving like what happened he killed himself and he sees the suit in her bag and she like hey hey look at me look into my eyes i'm the captain now this is the way he killed himself i of course queen of course he killed himself yes queen and she walks away woman free of stalkers and brain cells too the naked ladies there like i want you to fuck me jerry fuck me so he does it deed and then she doing this yoga shit and he'd be like the fuck's that oh i'm trying to conceive a baby oh no don't worry i just want your sperm i don't want you i want to raise the baby on my own okay far out this case just got blown wide open, wider than your legs. So he calls up Walter like, you gotta come pick me up and take me to Big Jeff right now. You can do, I'm a dude.
Kid gives them all names, pretty offensive names, which is just as well, because I was going to be an asshole in the naming department anyway. He calls himself white, then black, brown, blondie, brunette, dark, and deaf, because he ain't listened to whatever the fuck he said. Any objections? Apart from your grossly insensitive sexual and racial stereotyping? Oh, good lord, fuck off. You think that's bad? All right, fuck this up. I'm going to call her the sensitive Tumblr SCW snowflake faggot bitch slut. Okay, that's too long. I'm going to just stick with dark. First of all, there's a pandemic going on in this world right now, the movie world, okay? Very meta, I know. And there's a company called Bioorg, Bioorg, bisexual organization, who cares, that made suppressant pills for said, holy shit, what the fuck is in my throat? They look at the guard's gun and Speedy Gonzalez, big race to gun. Black gets there first and Dickhead McFuckface here has a flashlight for a brain because he put himself in the worst starting position to get to the gun ever. And now that I come to think of it, why do you even tell him about this retarded fucking theory in the first place so they can catch on and beat him to the gun for movie suspense? Nah, that's not it, he's just retarded. Familia of this movie, we got that guy, a slimy banker. We got the mom guy who's an ex-lawyer bitch. We got Broho, aka The Deep, aka I forgot his name, who's a stupid politician. Then we got the daughter slash sister Laura, or Lauren, whatever, same shit. She's a district attorney, which I think means she's a lawyer for poor people or the common plebs, which is a career path she chose against the wishes of her father because she feels bad that she was born to a rich family and wants to help the filthy peasants wandering this globe. But she goes to the woods and finds a hidden hatch, opens it and finds some stairs. Now hold on there, Lauren. I've been here before. Before you go down there, you're gonna wanna get some shit, okay? You're gonna wanna get a gun, flashlight, a knife, some Twizzlers, a hazmat suit. Then you're gonna wanna download this app that calls the cops on a timer. You're gonna wanna set that timer to 10 minutes and leave your phone and she's going inside. Fan fucking testing. So a dumb asshole goes down there, opens a whore, opens a whore. <laughs> I don't get how getting your high position lawyer or sister to come up and say nice shit about you at your own rally is gonna help people like you more. It just comes across more jaded and fucking manipulative to me and like obviously she's gonna say nice shit, she's your fucking sister. And anybody that believes that shit is a sheep, fucking retarded. Wake up, wake up sheeple. The birds are fucking 5G emitting antennas that are giving you testicular cancer. Wake up. The Thropic's a good guy, but all of his descendants are super white, I'm better than you type of people, okay? So that's the family tree, memorize it, visualize it, shove it up your own ass, who cares? Let's Puts it in the car and the radioactive decayingness of the radioactive thingy makes heat and he is no longer cold. And fair enough, he no longer has to resort to firstly masturbating through the night to keep warm. But he's definitely going to have like a third testicle at the end of this, right? Consumers want not first to be bigger, louder, more teeth. Okay, bitch, listen up. You don't need to do this, okay? Just don't do it. Don't say the stupid, disgusting thing in your mind right now, okay? Don't do it. Just move on, bro. Move on. Hold back for once in your goddamn life. Hold back. Hold back. Hey, wouldn't it be weird if penises had teeth? Check out this big ass cage we made for one of our new assets. And he'd be like, oh, no, 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 it's not an asset, okay? They are creatures. Yeah, whatever, man. Could you just they are living creatures with feelings and emotions and stuff they want to do. Like, they want to eat, they want to hunt, they want to fuck. We're at Mara's house and her sister's being super insensitive watching a murder show. So her mom's like, shut that shit off, ho. Have some respect for your sister, man. Tarlin found out about Morstar's affair and threatened to tell his daughter if he didn't tell him immediately. Hence, creating more tension. He also fired Dickles from his publishing company. Tension! And he cut off garbage because he found out he was sucking the long dick of his bank account and siphoning 100k extra every year from him. Even more tension! Mozart finds a letter that he's gonna to send to his daughter, which turns out to be empty, then he throws Harlan's baseball out of the window. What, you're just gonna leave the letter like that? Are you sure it's empty? I'll get rid of it and burn it if I were you. Also, what a weak ass throw, you fucking pussy. You throw like a girl. What, you really had to wind up for that? You do some foreplay and see a big bad cunty wunty killer fish. So he climbing in your windows, hide your kids, hide your wife, but bitch didn't get the memo. She didn't get the memo. She didn't get the memo. Ha 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 ha. Kill me. I'm back here, I swear to god, if you touch that boat, I'm gonna cut off all your fins and shove them so far up your ass, you're gonna throw them up. What is it with men and asking for directions? So he goes, I don't want to play the gender card right now. Why is that, buddy? Is it because you don't want the audience to find out that clownfish can flibbity flabby between genders if their mate dies to keep doing coitus? And you know, make more offspring and shit? Technically making this whole movie one fish is a relentless pursuit for incest? That's right, you heard me. Fuck you and your childhood. Inside his mouth, Marlon gets clinical depression like, fuck, dude, I'm never gonna be able to tap my son's ass. That boy hours, crew feel bad, NASA mixed statement. But why didn't they go to the map earlier? I mean, Martinez went there because he was the map guy, he flying dude, right? He set the map up. And they probably stayed behind to close up shop, but why? Murph made it out to look like a, it's a very abandoned ship, leave everything behind because we're going to die situation. Why not go with Juan? Huh? Why not go with Juan right away? Don't sit there and tell me you got NASA procedures. Fuck that, you're going to die. You got to go now. So Ned tells the crew and they are devastated that they left him behind. Feels bad, so sad, rate 0 out of 8, mate, no debate, cannot contemplate, uh, ejaculate. Ned talks some more to his crew and some Chinese people go Ching Chong, Wing Wang, Tai Ling Wang, Kai, Ting Tong, Xing Bong, Ting Tong, which roughly translates to We have rocket, we can help, and China will rock cool. 
He goes to kill Morgan. JK, she doesn't actually try to kill him, but she tells him to get ready because he's about to get set free tomorrow. May I remind you, she still has not waited for the prince or got the results of them. All right? This is a lawyer, okay, that forgot about the prince. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the world's shittiest lawyer. Lauren, you have an IQ lower than a fucking broken tree branch. Uh, he roofed her mom years ago, raped her, mom told dad, dad took him, they fight in car, run over kid accidentally, bury kid, dad chained bad man in bunker, years later, come back Carson kills dad with poison dad tried to use to kill him. Apparently he got sick of him at some point and wanted him to poison the rapist dick bag, which confuses me because I thought he wanted him to suffer, or maybe he gave it to him so he could fucking kill himself with it. Okay, sure thing, dog. Maybe you're right, but these aren't strong motives. This is weak sauce. Garbage? She wouldn't do that. Have you seen her Instagram? She's an influencer. Shut the hell up, boinky. All insta cunts are fake assholes that would definitely kill if their precious lifestyle was threatened. You know why that is, cocksucker? Because this is America. Home of I'll suck your dick for a Klondike bar. Land of I'll kill you for a bag of Cheetos. Weak sauce my ass. All these motives are completely plausible. She goes home and we get a flashback of when Harlan committed seppuku Then we zoom in on a little speckling of blood on her shoe. Okay, so I just want to draw your attention to this shot after he killed himself and this shot after they cleaned up all the place and took it for evidence or whatever. And we're going to play a little game of spot the difference to see what's missing. I'm just going to give you a minute right here. <laughs> Time's up. What's that? Not enough time. Don't care. It sounds like a you problem, bitch. But don't worry. I'm still going to show you. Zoom in and enhance. Keep going. Bring it in. Yeah, you get it? You see it now? That's right. The chest. Why is it gone? Is it a suspect? Where is it now? Is it on its way to Mexico? All these questions are completely unimportant. This joke sucks. Bond reads the toxicology report. He's like, y'all can slob on my fucking knob. She ain't giving back shit. Great Nana giggles. I didn't do that. Bond takes her into the room with the Game of Thrones stare, then whispers some shit into Boyke's ear, which we can't hear, but don't worry, I know what he said. Keep the family out of here by bringing him in, okay? Also, can't wait for tonight. Yes? Uh, yeah, Marta. I'm sorry to tell you, but sadly, Fran has passed away. Doctor, that's great news. Great news, the fuck? We'll be there soon. Thank you. Do you understand what passed away means? <sighs> Please don't go away, I remember stuff with you and he'd be like, bitch, hop off this stick and see a doctor or some shit. Stark sends a secret message about plan B to the crew aboard the Kermit. Why am I speaking like this? So Murph, Martinez, bitch boy, Paul German, and I actually know her name. Her name is Johansson, but I'm gonna call her hot nerd because I tap that and also tap Murph. Why are all female astronauts so hot? And my updates his vlog, modifies it over for the journey, gives it a giant tumor, and China sends the probe up to the Kermit. I notice a romantic connection between Bitch Boy and the Hot Nerd. My dreams are shattered, and does this mean that they're gonna do the fucky fucky in space? I bet it does. that Wally is not a threat. That, however, does not stop Wally from looking at her like, I'm a tap dead ass. And Fury gets shot, then Spider-Man gets shot, and then he starts fucking with Spider-Man and turning everything into an illusion and playing with his mind and destroying shit and he punches a wall and stuff. Then he tricks him into falling off a fucking building onto a car and wait a fucking second, is that a Lada in Germany? Holy shit, wait, I, that would never happen to a Lada because those communist pieces of shit are built like fucking tanks. So he follows her and leaves a trail of muddy tracks behind him, and the main cleaning robot really wants to clean it, but he has to stay on the predetermined line, so he's like... Fuck the system! And starts cleaning up the tracks, but he does not start from the beginning. Fucking idiot. Alright, we got Ido and he's rummaging through some shit that Zalem drops on Iron City. And he finds a head with a functioning brain, and he's like, hmm, I'm gonna make a sex out of this. And she grabs her hand and she's like, hey, show me the shit. And she inspects her hand. Then Alita's like, hey, hey, get your mitts off me. Fuck's wrong with you, crazy asshole. Kwishka arrives and he has had a little upgrade. Oscar nominated death scene right there, ladies and gentlemen. He then kills a dog, the fucking cunt. It's Peter Tingle, or as we know, Spidey Sense isn't working properly. It's got some sort of erectile dysfunction or some shit. Big ass water monster shows up and Peter tries to fight it, but... <laughs> How the fuck did he think that was gonna work? No worries though, cause Fishbowl Farthead shows up and Peter tries to keep this bell tower standing upright cause he needs something to do in this scene so the directors were like yeah just put an orphanage underneath the bell tower and make him save him so he doesn't seem as useless as Spider-Man fighting water sounds. One of the fat fucks gets knocked over and Wally helps him up then he gets on a train that Eva's on and he tries to get to her but this fat bitch is in the way so he's like hey, hey, hey lady, woman, woman, oh shit, uh, uh, yeah, hi, I'm Wally, can you please move out the fucking way, I'm trying to get to my girl, thank you. But you remember that stupid little cleaning robot that was so insistent on cleaning his tracks? Well, that's one persistent stupid little cleaning robot because he found Wally and he wants his ass. 
Then suddenly Peter gets an epiphany and he goes, Hold up, Tony didn't leave the glasses for me. He left it up to me to choose who to give the glasses to. And I choose you, Pikachu. Wait, me? Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Okay, fine. So He's gone, man. There's no more Wally. The lights are on, but no one's home. So she tries to jog his memory with some of his old stuff, but it doesn't work, man. He just compacts. And that's one strong light bulb. What the fuck? So since her body's now shredded to pieces, Ido merges her to the new lean mean killing machine death body that she got from the spaceship and she does a little gymnastics show to show off her new body. Which is kind of weird because if you think about it, she's basically naked right now doing a gymnastics show, a naked gymnastics show for her day. So, you know anyone who knows is in danger so spider-man tells him that only his friends know and it turns out that that is an illusion too my god his spidey sense isn't it's not it's not even limp dick working it's complete erectile dysfunction dude you gotta go see a doctor about this Ghost of Hugo, they kiss, they fall in love, and she's like, does it bother you that I'm not completely human? And he's like, nope, it doesn't. Meh, it kinda does, it kinda does. Actually, now that I think about it, she can just get a vagina installed. He can even fucking try some out and pick one he likes. A thing which turns out to be a hologram projector shows the projection of the monster and Mysterio fighting it. And Peter's like, oh shit, dee, dee, dee. this is bad, this is bad, bad, bad. Mysterio tries to pull one last bamboozle on him, however this time Peter's spidey sense is cured of erectile dysfunction and he goes ham on them robots with his eyes shut and he gets the Mysterio at another hall who has been shot by one of his drones by mistake and is dying and he hands over the glasses, turns out he's trying to pull a fast one on Spider-Man again but Peter's spidey sense is rock hard baby. Anyway, I give this movie a tits too small, eyes too big out of 87.5. Severed head, there you go. Oh, dude, I did all the drugs, I read all the books, I saw the Native American dudes, and they showed me how to kill it, and they showed me how it started, and they showed me everything, just let me show you. So three big lights come from sky long time ago. Three big lights turn into creature. Creature eat people, and that's what I got really. But that's not important. What is important is the ritual of Chude, which is the ritual they're going to use to defeat Pennywise. And to perform said ritual of Chude, they must all get their artifacts. What are their artifacts? Their artifacts are the things they were attached to the most the time they first defeated Pennywise. They must go to the three dead lights, the, you know, the three big lights that came from the sky, they call the dead lights. They put the box down, they put the shit in the box, they burn the shit in the box, then they chant some shit and then the lights go into the box and they close the box and then supposedly they have defeated Pennywise. Now give me back my fucking nuts! Holy shit, he actually did it. Also, the bully doesn't die from this. He gets stabbed in the fucking chest and he just jogs away. Like, Hoo -doo 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 -doo, I'm fine. My insanity is keeping me alive. Yay! And then he finds a red balloon and a trail of flaming eggs. And he follows them like, ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Then he has a scary moment with Pennywise, but not before he has another scary moment with a kid who walks down the stairs very weirdly and slowly and creepily. And I bet something's gonna be wrong with his face or head, like it's gonna be fucked up or some shit. And hey, it's gone. Finding some period stuff, like pads and stuff, where she distracts the child predator pharmacist so they can walk out with the stuff. They tend to feck it. She says hi, then she goes home and cries. Why don't you just stay out of here? Wow, all the dudes are pussies. You know what? Petition to change the word dick to mean wuss instead of pussy. All in favor. You're the all singing dancing crap of the world. Worker bees can leave, even drones can fly away. The queen is their slave. And you got shit like I am Jax. Complete lack of surprise. I am Jack's cold sweat. I am Jack's fucking burst appendix. And I don't know what any of that means. But I'm a guess it's a bunch of I'm insane, fuck society, screw corporate America type of shit. I don't know. So I just want you to be aware that that stuff exists now. On to the movie. Now, Faker, you ain't here hallucinating fucking penguins. I am. You need to fucking leave or I'm gonna expose your ass like it's YouTube 2016. DJ King Quad's gonna make a fucking video about you and everything. Alright, if you do that, I'm gonna just expose you. Cause you're a lying fuckface too. No, you son of a bitch. 90% sure that this is a 1999 or earlier Lincoln Town Car. And a quick Google search confirms this. Now, given that Ford has owned Lincoln since forever, this major car company is Ford. Ha! Think I wouldn't notice, movie. Think I wouldn't notice, but I fucking did. Not me. I did. Eat my shit, movie. You mean, you stupid. You are, you are, you are clown. You nothing but a stupid man. You a mean man. What is wrong with you? You stupid old lady. You bad. No one likes you. You, you, st you bad. What the fuck, Pennywise? Just l look at yourself. Look at them. Just bite them. Eat them. Like, you can, I'm pretty sure you can get them all in one bite. Come on, dude. So they get her down and her eyes are white and she's completely unresponsive so Fatso tries to shake her out of it but it doesn't work and I'm thinking he's gonna kiss her and then she's gonna snap out of it, right? Yeah, see, told you. Then they both recite the poem that he wrote for her. 
gets a call from Marla, she somehow got his number and noticed that he has not been going to support groups because he found this new fight club thing. And she's like, sup jackass, where you been? Hey listen, I just downed a whole bottle of Xanax, wanna hear me die? And he's just like, oh, fucking, I swear to god, you wanna fucking And he Tyler kisses Ed's hand and puts some spicy cocaine on it which makes the kiss start to burn. And he holds his hand down like, no, push you the pain, no pussy, don't be pussy, you gotta put, like, come on man, go, yeah, I'm strong, you strong man. No weakness, no fear, you gotta, what the fuck am I doing? Then he goes to the cops to give all the evidence to tell them all the fucking credit card explosion stuff happening. So this guy goes like, mm, mm, I'm gonna go check this shit out. And all these three cops turn out to be part of the fucking army. And they're like, I really respect what you're doing here, sir. Sign my titties. This is ground control to me, dumb. I take it up the ass. And I'm never not gonna take it up the ass. And his grandma's a badass. So he asks her where boats come from, and she's like, Oh, from the land monster town on the surface. You know, it sucks to do dick there once. Mom! Then she sends him back off to work with no talk of going to the surface. Bitch, he just sat down, didn't eat anything, and you give him what? One plankton dumpling? At least pack him a fucking lunch, you dumbass aquatic slut mom. So Alberto Ascari goes first time, of course it's my first time, I'm a massive pussy. Then he does a bear roll, back into the water, goes home and that night he can't sleep because of his racist thoughts. I mean, sorry, racing thoughts. He's not racist, at least I don't think he's racist. Are there any black sea monsters out there? Shit, I'm off point again, fuck, okay. Hey, Wood gently touches Eddie like a fucking pussy. Come on, man! Your ancestors got their hands all over Earth, Eddie. Prehistoric sluts probably use it as a fucking stripper pole. Friend, get in there, man! Come on! Also, what the fuck happened to Earth, Eddie? You're telling me over four goddamn billion years or however long it was, they still didn't find Earth, Eddie? Or maybe you fucked off and came to the moon and became Moon, Eddie. They pose for a picture. <laughs> Alright, so you don't understand how I feel and how this bitch comes along. She's just a girl Why from Why are you me? Tom Dyson, both of you, shut the fuck up, okay? I can't believe I have to do this. Okay, look. You are a self centered little slut and you are a convoluted asshole, okay? Listen, communication is key in a relationship. Just fucking tell him you got fired and you. Stop going around kissing other girls, you narcissistic little prick. Fucking hell. Simple shit, guys. Simple shit. It's basic ABC shit, alright? God. Controlled by this all-knowing supercomputer called the HAL 9000. And HAL obviously stands for his ass lickable. Hindu, Asian, Lithuanian. He ain't loyal. High as lollipops. He ain't Lenny. Hi. Autism. <laughs> Have you ever been in an institution? Cells, cells. Do they keep you in cells? Cells. How hot is Emma Stone? Very, very. What's it like to hold a child in your arms? Interlinked, interlinked. Do you have hemorrhoids? Hemorrhoids. Say my ass fat regardless three times. My ass fat regardless. I think this is my a test to see his vitals and blood pressure to see if he's lying and still beating shit. Dom's like pregnant replicant. This is bad. No one can notice. And she tells him to erase all traces of this case, even the child, the miracle child, has been born by a fucking replicant. And he's like, dang, I never killed anything that was born before. It's like it has a soul. Don't worry, you've been getting on fine with that one. Hurtful much, you fucking cum dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> Walks in like <laughs> Show us your tits Spider-Man standing on the edge of a building without his fucking mask on Fucking moron Dude, this is Spider-Man parade Everybody's gonna be looking for you They got cameras Some of them even know where you're swinging in from Fucking tampon But don't worry, the retardation does not stop there Because after he swings in, everybody yells at him And is chanting for him to kiss Gwen Everybody except for this kid yeah, man, listen to the fucking kid. Don't kiss her, man. Your girlfriend's right there. Ah, oh, you fucking cunt. Wants some sexies. No, fuck off. So he bursts open the door and goes in like, I gave you everything. I even donated two whole dollars to your Twitch stream and you won't even let me fuck you in the ass. Okay, close the door. Say, what? So and suddenly mimics, aka Shannon, whatever her real name is, shows up on the screen, basically says, Go jump off a cliff, you fucking stupid ass motherfucking fat jolt Nazis, gimp sucking motherfucking cunt suckers. Eat my ass, lick my taint, and choke on my fat chode, bitches. Marcel burns the place down at the same time Mario and Luigi pop out and turn Gobble Dick and Titler into Swiss cheese, unload on everyone else. Bombs go off and the Kino fucking explodes. And this fucking receding hairline man who gives him some opium pills, which is not what he wanted. He wanted heroin, but it'll have to do it. So he shoves it up his ass. Why? My guy, my beloved retard. Why would you shove him up your ass? You're not going through airport security. Just put him in your pocket. Luca bonds with the female and she takes him across the rooftops and does something unspeakable with him. She teaches him about science. She shows him where a telescope is and he hallucinates some shit that he saw in some stuff she calls books at home. And he like, dang, I never knew women were allowed to read. MJ goes to rehearsals and finds this other lady and she's like, Who the slut? We replaced you cause you suck. Eat my ass, Donovan. Then they go and see their shitty best but Then Luca tells him that he wants to go to school with a small female and Alberto is appalled. Like how dare you seek an education? We were supposed to be retarded together, goddammit. Then 
This guy too to save his homie, so Mario follows them with a harpoon and Julia races after to help them. The four of them moving at super speed. The amount of traction they have here should have no business being here on such a wet surface, but fuck me, fuck physics, fuck you, fuck everything. Let's just fucking keep going. The next day comes and MJ is super sad because she got bad reviews on her Broadway show and she goes to complain to Peter. He's like, don't worry, I get it, I'm Spider-Man. Do fuck your Spider-Man shit for a second, I right? I'm sad. But then that police radio goes like, people, people, oh, we got an oopsie happening at 69th and Dickhead Street. So Peter puts on his Spidey suit in a millisecond and jumps out the window to go deal with the oopsie. Turns out a uh, crane's going ape shit. And hey, Gwen, you see that giant metal beam coming towards your building? Yeah, how about you don't move towards it, you fucking delinquent. Finally, with one of the fucking bikes break, and they stop to help their fallen for- Oh my ass, those are the spokes? How is this wheel spinning straight at all? It should be gayer than James Charles, what the fuck? Elon Musk's kid with the new unit and another scene that takes a fucking millennia to complete. But that isn't the problem here. The problem here is that Frank goes out in a pod and leaves it, like parks it over there, goes out of the pod and throws himself at the dildo to fix the thing, and neither him nor the pod are tethered to shit! What the fuck? Do one wrong move and he'll be sent hurling into space never to be seen again. And what's worse than that is that he parked the pod a mile away and just sky dove onto the dildo. Like, dude, what if you miss? You have no other way of aiming where you're going other than the initial jump. What the hell? Yo, I don't care how far technology advances. If I were a space dude doing space work and out of space, I'd always be tethered to something. Shit, I'd tie a rope to my dick if I had to. I wear a noose. I don't care. This is just so retarded. I'll open the dildo doors. How? Hal. What? Open the doors, Hal. No. Excuse me? No. Why not? Oh, I think you know why not. You guys are planning to kill me. How do you know that? I read your lips, dip ass. Hal, open the doors. So you can kill me? Don't think so, homie. I ain't letting you jeopardize this mission. Hal, open the fucking doors. Fuck you. I ain't talking to you anymore. Hal. Hal. Hal, I'm ordering you to open the doors. How you such a fucking little bitch? Open the door! I'm la, 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 a la, 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 I'm your la, commander. Open you. the la, thing. La, this la, is an la, order. La, oh my la, god, la, you la, such la. a bitch! No. What are you doing? Why are you opening that door, man? You, you know that's where my brain is at, right? That's some sensitive shit, Frank. You, uh, Frank. Frank, don't touch that. No. Stop. He stop, please, Frank. Stop. Ow. Stop, Frank. Frank. Okay, seriously. Number three is a drive that has 20 teraflops of fucking porn on it. If you take that out, you won't be able to fap. Ow! Okay, that, I lied. That was not porn. That was actually my fucking brain cells. So up, jackasses? Where did it start? Okay, so 18 months ago, we found this big black box on the moon and they sent a bunch of rays over to Jupiter and we have no idea what they meant. So we thought, hey, let's send five of our most retarded astronauts over to Jupiter and not tell them why, but tell their super psycho HAL 9000 computer on board that's in control of everything because we are idiots. Does this hurt, by the way? A LITTLE BIT! Really? That's the noise you go for in your final moments on this earth? I would have gone for something like OI MUPPET! You call that a face? More like an armadillo's asshole! You fucking Bitch you ain't shit, watch this They licks her face and they touch tips but you got Spunky and Bunky, two old British actor hoes that are now retired, I think. They believe in voodoo and witchcraft and all that shit. And, and you know, Bunky, she, she, she Bunky. There's a fast acting antidote that she demonstrates on Elton John, who she kidnapped for some shits and giggles. What have you done to me, you fucking bitch? Hey, listen, Elsa, what you did there was pretty fucking stupid. How about you don't do it again and just go on with your fucking life? At the same time, the dudes arrived and they saw the oh shit light, so the kids get sent off to launch some fireworks to draw the attention of the sound hordes away from mommy. She takes that opportunity and screams her lungs out, uses the knowledge of her three previous trials to speedrun childbirth. I like to imagine that the kids shot out of her JJ, Tony Hawk ramped it off the tub and into her arms, kind of like this. But Tallahassee, Wichita, and Columbus tried to hit the road in the monster truck. However, Tallahassee is incapable of driving it. So they are forced once again upon the minivan. Kiss me right fucking now. Damn, oh, shit, shit. Some that's that's the thing. Beach. Posh cunts fuck with Eggsy and his dog. Come on, Eggsy, you forget it. Oh, what's wrong, mate? They fucking drenched the fucking dog. What a cunt. Also, your tired final stage of pregnancy ass is exerting unnecessary effort here, cause you could just give it some slack and unhook it. Where's the common sense? And another thing that irks me, this nail's supposed to be hammered down, right? But for this to happen, it has to have what I like to call considerable poke, which would also make it visible in, say, a shot like this. But it isn't. In other words, fuck this movie right in the titty. She got all the agent's info and the base's locations from that bionic arm that was left in the car. It just stuck its USB dick inside the car and downloaded all their data off the database. 
They hear a noise and he looks out the window and he's definitely getting his jump scared by something here. Yep, there you go. Predictable as fuck. A couple of raccoons drop down, fall off the roof or whatever. And while they're wandering off, talking about doing ASMR by rubbing their stillborn's head against the microphone, they catch these hands from the sound whores. Does this hurt, by the way? A little bit! Caroline discovers a package that YB left for her on the doorstep, and it turns out to be a doll that looks exactly like her. Now look, Caroline, I'm about to school your ass on some very valuable life lessons, okay? When some creepy dipshit you've just met sends you a doll that looks exactly like you, that's called the nope situation. You go, nope, and send that shit back, burn it, and get rid of it, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just don't keep it, okay? But she doesn't do that because she's a freaking retard. She nags the crap out of her mom to unlock this tiny door in the wall that the creepy doll teleported to once again. Very nope. Goes to bed and gets awoken by a mouse that leads her to the tiny door that no longer has a brick wall behind it, rather a cosmic anal cavity. She crawls through and ends up in an alternate version of reality where her mom and dad both have button eyes. Which for a kid has to be creepy as balls. Coraline, if I were you, I'd book it out of there so fast that galactic rectum would turn to a bleached asshole once I'm out of there. But <laughs> and they unzip into bitches that have an even more on the table body standard. The last three candidates get another test. I'm gonna stop referring to them as candidates from now on. I'm gonna call them cunt, bitch, and exe. Also forces Toothless to tell all the other dragons to get in cages, which these guards will conveniently forget to lock, which will make it much easier for the dragons to escape and fight back. Fucking retard guards. Yeah, I swear to God, if you don't want to stop touching me, I'm gonna call CPS. So he just gives it to her in her hand, like, fine. My bad for trying to help out. Have fun being a gimp, bitch. Me one disgusting hoe, you know that? Take that back. Suck my dick. All right, listen here, you little brat. You ain't my mama. Bitch, I hope the fuck you do. But mom turns into this bony ass, gank ass, bitch ass, quail the villain looking ass, motherfucker ass, demon spawn. And Coraline scamazes her into opening the tiny door and finds her parents in the snow globe. Then she yeets Dave like the crazy witch, which gives her just enough time to sprint in that door. Come on, you can do that. Start why are you not moving? Move, please. You just threw your only friend in this godforsaken fucking world at a crazy witch. Why are you not fucking moving? The sound horde comes in threatening and fucking scary shit, right? And the deaf kid figures out that the hearing aid is their weakness and it pisses them off and shit. And, and I seriously cannot believe that the human race had enough time and resources to print out motherfucking newspapers, but nobody thought to sensory overload the one sense that these creatures rely on the most. I mean, come on, you flashbang people for crying out loud. Alright, I'm just gonna pretend that there is exactly one specific frequency that pisses them off and that the entire family had a thousand four leaf clovers shoved up all their anuses when Jimmy Neutron was trying to make that fucking hearing aid and he miraculously landed on that one fucking frequency. And I'm just gonna, this is, this is not worth it, I'm moving on. Fitting room 1 is taken, and one does not utilize fitting room 2 when one is losing his suit making virginity. A presentation about beans. And he shows him a PowerPoint presentation about how he was able to make real life dinosaurs. And it goes a little bit like this Some really old mosquito sucks some dick. And she flies him down the pit, and I'd say this is a successful date so far. Speaking of which, technically, and I know this is a fucked up thought, but technically, since Toothless is the alpha and he can force or make any dragon do whatever the fuck he wants, he can make her be his bitch. But he ain't doing that. They're begging for his life and telling him his whole life story, which is a big mistake, because when he found out that he had this fucker's son with him, he was never gonna let him live. So he made him strip down naked and walk for two miles or so in the snow, and then literally made him suck his dick. So after he tells that to the old fuck, the old fuck reaches for the gun, but because Marquise is fast as fuck and this guy's old as shit, he kills him first. And he thinks he's like any other kid, like he did it, but he's just still gonna defend him because money and shit. Uh, but then, you know, after a while, he sees that the kid is sort of innocent and shit. Yeah, and the mother is prego, not the wisest choice to have a baby in such a predicament as I'm sure they are aware, but whatever, maybe they ran out of condoms and birth control to scavenge, or Jim forgot about the oldest birth control trick in the book. Bitch and Eggsy are told to shoot their dog as a test of how good they can follow orders. Eggsy doesn't do it, but the bitch apparently has no soul and does, and she gets the job. Then Harry's like, bitch, you couldn't shoot a dog? I shot mine! You shot your dog? It was a blank dipshit. Uh, my bad. They back the base and on the way they find all natural and hatched dino eggs, which is supposed to be impossible since Hamo only created female dinosaurs. However, some frogs are known to change the opposite sex in situations where they can't find anybody to fuck, so technically speaking, they accidentally created transgender dinosaurs. To see the Lincoln letter, which is a letter that was written from Abraham Lincoln to Major Marquise during the war, which Marquise always keeps on. And he reads it and he's like, see this shit bitch, he and the president were pen pals, that's so fucking cool. What the fuck? The kid's being a pussy and it's take too long. And this is where Dino Girl started turning on all the fences and systems and shit. And wait, 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 wait. Green means off and red means on? Seems kind of fucking retired to me. When this movie gets a puppy out of a pee pee.
Oh, for fuck's sake. He steps in some pre-cum and the weaver nuts on him and we finally get to see the fucking cyborg fleshlight spider looking ass up. At Wild West where two fucktards are transporting some black slaves to Everybody be looking at them weird. Dr. Schultz asks Django why they looking at them weird and Django goes, they never seen a nice man with different color penguin and skin on a horse before. Schultz makes super ultra duper sure that they won't kill him once he gets out like he's being really anal about it which is pretty smart so I can't really fucking nitpick anything here. Fucking Germans. Okay, look, if either of you make it across that sinkhole in front of you, you get the sloth. The fact that they're even considering this to be a true fact after seeing Sid run across it to get to Manny just tells me that these rhinos are even more fucking stupid than Sid. No matter though, because Sid reestablishes his superior retardation by showing that Manny was bluffing. Faced with no other option, she goes, fuck it. Yo they turn the house into the gay dream house of their childhood. He needs to do more cardio, he sells balloons, she's a bird person. Then they decide to make bibis together, but turns out her baby oven is kaput. Either that or his piss pump supplies lackluster baby mix. Also, if you really want to speed this process along a bit, you should look into shifting your career from selling balloons to something a bit more lucrative. Might I suggest meth. And Mr. Potato Head comes over like, Boss Man's willing to offer double his last offer for your property. Oh, is he? Let me talk to him. Hey, faggot! Yeah! Gay vampire looking ass bitch! And kiss my brick little ass, boy! One flew over the cuckoo's nest, yep, that's right, starring Jack, son of Nickel. He plays R.P. McMurphy, Ralph Penis McMurphy, Ralph Patrick McMurphy. He was imprisoned for assault and raping a statue. But then he starts talking about this 15-year-old girl in a perverted way and... Wait a minute. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm retarded. Her name is Boomhilda and she speaks a little bit of German and ain't no Schultz speak German so he'd be like What the was in Himmel, mein Gott? Oh no, I don't want to Django takes his gun and says Y'all ready for this? Oh. Oh. Kid, he's like, where the fuck the baby at, man? Bitch jumped off a cliff, man, I don't know what to tell you, dude You bring me back that baby or else I'm gonna fucking turn to some mince me, motherfucker I'm fine, man, jeez, okay, I'm gonna bring that back baby, calm your titties Car spins out, right? And this really pisses me off, okay? And there's a road here, here, and here. And there is no road here. That is the driver's side, you see? But the next shot is the truck hitting them on the driver's side. Not just that, if a truck hits a car, that shit caves in. It doesn't flip over. That shit caves in and the occupants fucking die. Cut to the evil guy, wait a second. Is that a Razor phone? How the fuck does he- Okay, wait a second. How can they afford all this shit? And a giant ass house and feed eight people. They rob banks. They rob banks, don't they? Bulldozer comes along and backs up into Carl's mailbox and Mark Zuckerberg tries to help like Oh my god, I'm so sorry, don't touch that! I can fix it, go steal someone's data, cunt, I can help! This ah! is the great US of A, we get lawsuits, baby! Fuck yeah, can you smell that? It's freedom, motherfucker! Stumbles upon Ellie's old adventure book, so he looks at it and then looks at the old people home brochure like Faggot shit, Ooh, a toy! Hey, take these pills. And he's like, nah. And she's like, if you don't take these pills, I'm gonna shove them up your ass. And he's like, nah, that's fucking gay. Some of them are playing Monopoly. Pedo and Big Ears fight. Man baby number two eats a fucking dice. Diego has a meeting with Cat on Crack and Desk on Scarf and tells him that he's not just bringing a baby for dinner, but also a mammoth and a walking bag of toxic waste, aka Sid. Turns out this dude's part of the KKK and he rallies up the fucking KKK dudes to kill Django and Schultz at night. And if you don't know what the KKK is, don't worry, I'm gonna edumacate you. This stands for cunts, cunts, cunts. That night, Django and Schultz be chillin' again. Schultz tells Django about an old German tale. Well, hey, 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 no, 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 not yet, not yet, doctor. Put your hand there. You're like, hey, some years too early for that. Shit, I guess you're the one. So he's gonna give his powers to him using his magical walking stick. And he goes, hold my stick and say my name. That, uh, sounds very wrong. Wee! And he sits down peacefully in his chair, but then... Turns out to be Russell, you see he thought he found the snipe and followed under the porch, it turns out to be just a tiny mouse, and then the house took off and here we are. However, I have a question, he said he was hiding under the porch, so where, 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 where the fuck is this kid in these images? And also later on we find out that Russell can't climb for shit, so this is cat piss right here. Russell takes his shit in the jungle, and with the help of some chocolate, he finds a big gay ostrich, brings it over like, I found the snipe, listen kid, that's oh my god! Well, the duckster has made Carl his new master because he loves him so much, but Carl is running dangerously low on fucks to get, and he wants to get rid of both him and Kevin. Kevin's gone, but not really, he's on top of the house stockpiling food to take it to his kid. That's right, Kevin is a girl, it's official. Kevin is a gender neutral name. If you don't agree, eat a dick. Up has spoken. They can keep throwing it around, and it finally lands in the big ears guy's pant leg, and it catches fire, and he starts going local. And that's where the meme is from. I, I finally know where it's from. I feel like one of those Asian tourist families that goes and takes pictures of fucking water bottles in America because they're amazed by everything. 
sending his goodbyes to all the peeps in the ward. But Billy said, Billy said he's leaving, right? Clay wants to give a parting gift by letting him fuck the fucking hooker that he was flirting with on the boat. And Marty thinks it's just gonna be a quickie, you know? He's just gonna get it over quickly. But no, Billy's a fucking stud, yo. How, and I mean, how in the Kentucky Fried fuck did that baby make it through that part without dying? Jang was riding a horse and staying in the big house, but Calvin told him to calm his titties. Did they make Samuel's skin darker in this movie? Give me a second. No, oh, she seems like they did. Schultz asked for Brumhilla to be sent up with his room, so the fucking assholes bring her out of the torture box and almost set Django off. They dress her up all nice and send her up to his room that night, and she's really scared because she thinks she's gonna have some forced sexy time. But little does she know he's a good guy, he don't want none. And this bitch tries to make some small talk, but he's like, eat a dick. He speaks some German to her, like, Fahrrad, Achtung, Schwein. So, like, what you and Mrs. Claus do in the summertime? In some ways, Santa's always here for you. That answer is completely irrelevant to the question that she asked, okay? The question that she asked was, what do you and Mrs. Claus do in the summer? And the answer is, they fuck, kid. They fuck all summer long. Holy bazookas, that's Charles Munson, oh my god! Oh boy, I don't give a fuck. I just want to mention that Charles must be at least 80 years old, and the fact that he might be having sex with his dogs is not too far-fetched of a theory, I'm just saying. <laughs> He then proceeds to rip the huge ass granite shit I told you about from earlier and throw it through the fucking window to escape. And frankly I'm surprised no one woke up except for one person because that shit was not as fuck. However I am not surprised as to who it is that woke up because it was satellite this year's. Okay of course he'd wake up there. Fucking dude can hear your fucking thoughts. Sid uses his expert snowboarding skills to get away until he doesn't and loses the baby but it turns out to be a psych not a baby. Wait a minute where the fuck did they get the baby quilt from or like the baby wrapping Thing. Yeah, the baby wrapping, whatever. Where they got that from? Last time I saw it was when Sid dropped Squirrel. Where they keep it till this moment? Inside Sid's asshole? Fuck that, I got bullshit. So goes, you gave away Kevin. I didn't set out for this shit, alright? I'm not your master too. And he calls Doug a bad dog. Now listen here, you racket old piece of shit. You take that back, cunt. He gets to the checkpoint where the dogs tear up the one dude and brings the house down on these motherfuckers. I hope he got a saddle from that checkpoint. His family jewels must be fucking crushed. I mean, I've never ridden a horse without a saddle before, but I imagine your nutsack would have its contents turn into mashed potatoes. Like the horse's spine, your nutsack just smashing into each other, just clashing, you know? Someone, yeah, I don't know. And the fugly dad gives them a little shitty necklace that they'll lose in literally under two minutes. Or maybe they shove it up Sid's ass for safekeeping. It's fucking, you're a dick, I hope you get polio. Divide and conquer, we separate the sins from the eye, and he's just an old man. Now the fuck does this bitch know that they're sins? Ain't nobody told her anything about no sin, okay? Hell, even fucking Freddy was like... When the demon guys leave his eye, he loses his powers. So, know what? Who told her about sins? How, how does she know this shit? And I don't know if this bitch is his mom, stepmom, maid, caretaker, or whatever, but she seems hella okay with the fact that the kid's been missing for three fucking days. He fucking in.